All right, so let's talk physics. I consider this to be fundamental. Uh, other people will consider energy to be more fundamental, but when we get to it, energy comes from this as opposed to the other way around, at least in my thinking. Force, as in may it be with you. What is force? What is a force? Mass times acceleration. What did you say again? Mass times an acceleration vector. Uh, the trouble with that, that's the total force. I'm just looking for more generic for just a force in general. Are you stuck to the chair? I'm more meant on like a, a subatomic level. Uh, we, we go more macroscopic at this point. Okay. Forces do hold things together, but they also keep things apart. And sometimes people will spout one out. Uh, the formal definition is an influence that might cause acceleration, which to me is so incredibly vague and useless. The better definition, better working definition is a push or pull. The symbol for force is that I use capital F it is a vector. Direction definitely does matter. As Patrick said, F equals MA, that force and acceleration, well, there need to be at least, if there's a vector in an equation, there needs to be at least one more on each side of the equation. So force and acceleration are in the same direction. And the way that I generally deal with this is I just start out with, here's the list of forces we're going to work with to start with, and then we'll slowly add as we need to. So sort of think of this as a checklist. f -tom, or not, whatever you want to do. And this is basically, this is our starting point here. F is for friction. The symbol I use for friction is what I would refer to as the Baroque F, sort of a extra fancy curled lowercase f. T is for tension. And the symbol I use for that is the capital F with the lower subscript, with the subscript T. I used to use capital T for tension, but later on there's some formulas we deal with near the end where we use capital T for something else. And so instead of at that point going, eh, we're just not gonna use capital T anymore for tension, uh, we'll just start out not using it. O is for other, I will explain what that means. N is for normal. And the symbol I use for that is a capital Y. And you might ask, why are we using a capital Y? That's what my high school physics textbook used, and that's sort of stuck with me. Uh, we also don't use capital Y for anything else. The Some textbooks will use capital N, and the trouble I have with capital N is that that is the unit for force, the Newton. And so if you're using capital N for normal force, you would, which in physics means that would be normal force is equal to three Newtons. Uh, in math class, that would mean that n equals zero. So I really don't like using capital N. If you want to use the lowercase n or, which could mean nano or f, n, sure. Usually in context, I know what you're talking about. But I will be using the capital Y. And g is gravitational. And in a 
show of lack of parallel, parallelity. Uh, the first three are nouns, those are adjectives. It's normal force and gravitational force. And there's two symbols for gravitational force depending upon context. There is the generic F sub G, and then there is the more specific W for weight. We'll get into gravitational force in chapter seven, I think it is. The, the more generic one. We'll be dealing with weight here more. And let me just throw in the uh, comment now that uh, the scales stand on the scale, it is not measuring your weight. There are, there are two basic, unfortunately there's two definitions of, of weight. One of them is the gravitational pull, which is what I use, and the other one is basically what the scale reads. So, and then in the case of the one-tenth textbook, uh, he changes his definition midway through. All right, so for each of these forces, there are certain requirements. Friction force requires contact. There cannot be friction between two things that don't touch. And it also requires desired relative motion. I understand relative. What does desire have to do? Uh, it doesn't actually have to move. For instance, I push against this right here. It's not moving relative to the floor. Oh. It just it wants to, though. If the floor were frictionless, this thing would move. Yeah, it just has to be trying to do something. The requirement for tension is you need a tight, or uh, for some reason I use taut instead of tight, uh, taut, rope, chain, string. It's a pulling force. So like a solid object could also have tension, right? Because if, if I have a beam and it's flexing? Or if I just have like a, a solid I-beam and I'm hanging something off of it. Yeah, I mean, you can have tension that way as well. As far as our context here, rope chain or whatever, but yes, I probably should expand my definition. I'm gonna skip other for right now. Normal force requirement is contact. Gravitational force requires, the generic one just requires two masses. There's a gravitational force between you and any other object in this room it's not particularly strong, for instance, if there's a gravitational force between Michael and his calculator, but it's a weak force, not capital W weak, it is a weak force, uh, this, or Michael's incredibly strong, the fact that he can walk away from the calculator without being pulled back towards it. It's called weight if one of those two masses put huge in quotation marks and one is small and the small is near the huge and the reason I put in quotation marks is that you know size is relative we're talking huge as in planet or star or moon, something at that level. Uh, elephant is a small object on that scale. Questions up to here other than what other is? All right, so let's talk about other. Other is problem specific. So a requirement for other is that 
there's a force mentioned in a problem. A force in problem of unknown origin or concerning origin. In other words, I have a block and there's five newtons pushing against it. What it actually is causing the five newtons is irrelevant to that problem potentially, and so that would be an example of other, where you don't know what the source is or what where it falls into the other categories, or perhaps you do know what's causing it and it really doesn't matter. I sometimes put down that you don't care what the source is, but you know, not caring from a physics point of view as opposed to necessarily your personal philosophy on physics. Alright. Forces, there's not a lot of times in physics where you can actually use the word always appropriately. There's most of the time rules, but one of the as close to always as you're going to get in physics is that forces always come in pairs. Each force of that pair is the same type same magnitude Magnitude, but each force acts on a different object in the opposite direction. Essentially a mouthful if you're not familiar with it. In essence, it's Newton's third law of motion. So right now, I am standing on the floor. The floor is holding me up, and I am pushing down on the floor. So that's a pair of forces. There's a normal force pulling me, pushing up on me. There's a normal force pushing down on the floor. So when we talk about these pairs here, so direction of each force in the pair, when you're dealing with tension, for example, that the two forces will be pointing towards each other, acting on different objects. So if I'm pulling on a rope, the force I exert on the rope is this way, the force the rope exerts on me is that way. When we do our force diagrams, they will be pointing towards each other. Gravitational force, they also are pointing towards each other, whether it's horizontal or vertical or whatever direction it needs to be. Normal force. Normal force are keeping things apart. It's the normal force which is keeping me from going through the floor. It's the normal force which is keeping me from going through the wall. Normal force wants to keep things apart. Or it's the normal force keeping me from going through the wall. Or it's the, norm the normal force is what's keeping the wall going through me. There's nothing special about the human condition. We are just another object in physics. Physics is a surprise. friction, the pair of forces will be parallel to each other, but in opposite directions. 
Again, acting on different objects. Questions of, oh, and other is problem dependent. It's whatever the problem says is the direction. So how do we get to the arrows and why they are oriented the way they are? Like why some point towards each other, why some point away from each other? It's question if it's pulling if it's a pulling force, then they're towards each other. If it's a pushing force, it's away from each other. And friction is just an opposing force. Friction doesn't really push or pull, it, it tries to stop the relative motion. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Other questions? We're just setting the foundation here. This is not the exciting part yet. Or maybe it is, but I don't know you well enough. Some of you potentially are just hiding your enthusiasm in quite a bit. Because you are raised with the same toxic masculinity. Don't show emotion. Sorry, don't show bad emotions. There we go. That's my problem for you. All right. Now, there's also not only do these forces have some direction relative to the other force in the pair, they also have some, they have a direction, it's the direction of each force with respect to the objects. Forces require at least two objects and, and that's a W right there. are parallel to the surfaces of contact. Parallel to surfaces, plural, of contact. And it opposes desired relative motion. So for example, I have a block with my calculator on top of it. As I move to the right, to my right, sorry, went too soon. If I move to my right, if the block were frictionless, which way would the calculator go? It would just stay where it is. Okay, and so this would come out from underneath it. So relative to the block, which way is the calculator gonna go if it were frictionless? or to the box left, more importantly. So relative to what it is touching, the calculator wants to go that way. So the friction opposes that and will act that way on the calculator. It will act the opposite way on the block itself. The direction of tension, it is Parallel to, and we're talking about with rope chain as opposed to something that's flexing. Uh, parallel to the taut rope chain, whatever it happens to be that's pulling. Other problem dependent. It, the problem, the problem usually tells you the direction. Normal. What does normal mean in math? Well, normal acting from 
plane is like sticking straight up out of the plane, perfectly perpendicular to the plane, right? The normal force is perpendicular to the surfaces of contact. Some textbooks will call normal force a support force. I'm not as enthusiastic of that one. Even though a lot of the cases that we'll deal with here, normal will be supporting. But, because you can make the argument the floor is supporting you. But since I'm applying a normal force onto the floor, I'm not necessarily supporting the floor. Because if I stepped off the floor, I don't think the floor is going to suddenly shoot up to the ceiling. So, a what to the surfaces of contact? Perpendicular, that's my perpendicular symbol. Not an undermined H. And the gravitational force is directed or pointing at, I guess directed towards or pointing at the other the other center of mass. So right now there's a weight acting on me, a gravitational force acting on me, and it's pointing towards the center of mass of the Earth. Likewise, there is a gravitational force acting on the Earth, about 220 pounds, pointed up towards my center of mass. I'm attracting the Earth, the Earth is attracting me. 220 pounds of force, about a thousand newtons, a thousand newtons of force, is enough to influence me greatly because I could step off the table and I would fall. However, a thousand newtons acting on the Earth doesn't have much of an effect because the Earth is significantly more massive. All right, so we've set up the foundation. Any questions before we actually apply it? All right. Gonna do what I call force diagrams. Textbooks generally call them, uh, do something very similar. 